If you need to rent a car in Kathmandu these days, you have to deliver relief supplies to the earthquake zone in exchange. We're taking tents and sleeping mats to the Sindhu Palchuk district for a local aid organization. We drive for three hours, past houses that were virtually destroyed by the quake. But at least the people along the major roads are receiving aid. Suddenly, our drive okay. comes to an end. Okay. The mudslide has rendered the road impassable. We have to walk and experience what many aid organizations have come up against. Most of the villages are hard to reach. On our way, we meet a farmer who's giving her dying cow a few drops of water. After a two-hour hike, we arrive at last. The village teachers are distributing a few sacks of rice. It's the first relief delivery since the earthquake. It's not enough to go around, but at least it's something. Other villages cannot even be reached on foot. Uh, that's one big problem because roads have been blocked in same, some places. And there are many villages as such that there is no transportation facilities. People have been using helicopters and other transportations. Right now, we need like organized distribution, and there have been like so many villages that data have not been col collected, human casualties and needs have not been analyzed. It's obvious what Kumare Lama needs. Her house is a pile of rubble. When the earthquake struck, she was in the fields with her family. She's moved her kitchen outside. She's also storing rice and other foods here. A heavy rain shower can easily ruin a week's rations. We can't live in our house. We can't even go into it. Of course, we'll rebuild it, but that won't happen this year. So first we need a tent and, of course, drinking water every day in order to survive here. That's true of millions of people in Nepal who have had nowhere to live since the earthquake. In this village, at least, wheat is being harvested and threshed. It wasn't buried in the rubble. Families who got none of the relief supplies have gathered at the community hall. They're furious. The coordinator promises a new delivery will be coming to the valley. It's time to return to our car. Residents take us down on a motor scooter. When we arrive, we see large sacks of rice, more sleeping mats, and tents being unloaded. Just what the people up here need. It's not possible to get anything up there. How do you want to do that? Yes, no, our people are here. We will distribute it to, the, it to those people who have been affected, actually. So, and then the, the car, half of the, half of the materials, which is still in the, in the vehicle, we are, we are taking it upstairs, where there is much more affected. How do you do that? It doesn't work no, by car? After that, after that, we are moving up there. By motorcycle? Uh, by motorcycle or even by, by people who will carry it. So we'll manage to do it, uh, do it how it is possible. Even if it means people walking two hours with a 30 kilo sack of rice on their backs. We set off again for Kathmandu. On the way back, we meet these boys. Clowning around for our camera makes a welcome change for them. Thoughts about what the future may bring are far away at least for now. <laughs>